So did researchers just take stem cells, teach them to grow insulin, and solve type 1 diabetes? That is precisely what the uh, company Vertex is trying to say that they might have just done. So let's talk about the process of how they got there over the last 20 years. Let's talk about the results of the trial they just put out. And let's talk about the obstacles that I think are still um, question marks that stand between where we're at right now and getting to an actual marketable cure for diabetes. So um, 20 years ago, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation says that they gave a grant to try and develop some research uh, to a gentleman named Douglas Melton, who was a PhD researcher. And they say that over the next 14 years, he found a way to take stem cells track them in their development to pancreatic islet cells. Those are the cells that make insulin. And then they found a way to inject those into human beings so that they will start producing insulin in people as though they were your own cells. That is, on a science level, um, downright magical level stuff. So um, just even if this never becomes a marketable thing, congratulations to them. That is a big scientific deal. And I think this is awesome for the diabetes community because this could do a lot of interesting stuff. It looks like um, what they've been, been able to do is track this over the 90 days. So, so far they have the announcement of this Brian Shelton um, is the first human trial patient that they did this for. Uh, this was a gentleman who was taking approximately 39 units of insulin per day and they gave him this injection and tracked him over the next 90 days and watched how much insulin he needed in his response for it. And it was pretty great. So at 90 days later, they found out that his A1C, if you're diabetic, you track this, his hemoglobin A1C had dropped from an 8.6 to a 7.2. And the amount of insulin he was using went down from over 30 to under three to get there. So the amount of insulin he was having to use dropped and the, um, the A1C, his average blood sugar per day, dropped pretty significantly as well. The other thing to think about is you have to ask yourself, well, maybe these, this injection somehow just increased insulin sensitivity. How do we know that he was actually making insulin? And the way that they track that is there's a, um, a chemical marker called C-peptide, which is the way that we tell if the insulin someone has is being produced by their body. Um, his C-peptide was un untraceable prior to getting this injection. And then afterwards, he had marketable C-peptide numbers. And not only at a fasting level where his body was producing some of, some of this uh, insulin at a basal level like all of those who do not have type 1 diabetes tend to do, but they, tra they traced it and after he had eaten and gone through a, um, a glucose tolerance test, all of a sudden those levels went up significantly, which shows that his body was responding to increased blood sugar in his blood and was able to actually start in, like producing its own insulin at a higher level. So his body was doing that sort of stuff. So that is really, really amazing stuff. But I think it's important to talk about the limitations of this research, not only the obvious of, hey, well, this was one guy, uh, or hey, this was 90 days, we need to track it for a longer period of time, uh, but we need to look at what they were aiming this for. Now, they'll, the, the Vertex researchers talk a lot about how they did half of their intended dose. I don't know enough about their research because it's not all put out there yet, at least in a place that I could find, why they picked the, what their intended dose was. And um, so I'm not particularly sure what the plan was there. And I'm not sure when they plan or, or if they think that Mr. Shelton will require the full dose to go through treatment. Um, but that's a question there. But they also said that they initially restricted this to folks who were significantly having trouble with hypoglycemia, with low blood sugar. Um, that is particularly dangerous in people who what we would call like they're not hypoglycemic sensitive. They don't know or feel wrong when their blood sugar gets dangerously low. Um, most folks who take insulin, if their blood sugar starts to drop real low, will feel wrong. They will feel um, weak. Uh, they'll feel uh, nauseous. They'll feel upset. They'll, they'll, they'll feel wrong like something is, is going on. Uh, sometimes they'll feel clouded in their memory. Uh, or they'll feel like they're not, they're not thinking clearly those folks are at least protected by the fact that their body warns them by symptoms, hey man, your blood sugar is getting dangerously low. 
Um, and this was an issue for a lot of folks. And so this research talks about ways to protect folks from hypoglycemia. And it talks about that one of the things that Mr. Shelton had dealt with prior to this trial was before he got this shot, one of the problems in his life was recurring hypoglycemia. His blood sugar would get too low. And that is a, a major concern. Then when they talk about the adverse effects during the trial, um, and you can see this in the links I have below, they reference that he didn't have any serious adverse effects that were related to the actual shot, the, uh, the, the VX880. But they mentioned he did have severe hypoglycemia at one point, but then they specifically say that it wasn't because of the shot, and I'm confused by that because that wasn't really, at least in the article that I saw, that wasn't really delineated as to, well, where did he get this hypoglycemia from if it wasn't from uh, this shot. Now, maybe it's from one of the three units that he took during, uh, you know, every day during that month. I don't know, uh, but it doesn't seem to be very clearly delineated. The other thing that isn't that isn't really delineated is it said that a serious adverse effect he had was a significant rash. Uh, you can get rashes or cellulitis. Um, because folks who do this trial are expected to have to take immunosuppressing drugs, if I had to guess out loud, I would think it was probably because of the immunosuppression, but it's listed in the trial as not a reaction from the shot, but you have to take the immunosuppressive drugs to get this shot and get this treatment. So in a way, it's kind of part of the deal because it comes with the, the deal. Um, so I, I'm a little confused there because that hasn't been delineated yet. So one of the things that folks who are doing this have to look at is the fact that they are essentially getting a transplant. So if you get a kidney transplant, you get a lung transplant, you get a heart transplant, you have to take immunosuppressing drugs. Your body recognizes though that, that new thing that was just put in you as not part of you and often will try to kill it. And the way that you stop that is you take these immunosuppressing drugs. The trouble with that is that then your body is weakened in its ability to fight off normal um, immune problems, bacteria, viruses, things like that. And you can get horrible infections and you can die. You become more at risk of major problems. Um, this, at this point, this particular stem cell treatment for diabetes still has that limitation where those folks are expected to have to take immunosuppressing drugs. So you have to start looking at, well, are the problems I'm getting from my type 1 diabetes, are they worse than the problems I'm going to have from taking immunosuppressing drugs? The solution that Vertex seems to have to that is they mentioned in the article I'm going to link below that they are planning on a trial of a new encapsulating method that will, they, they hope, will eliminate the need to even take immunosuppressing drugs when you get insulin secreting stem cells injected into your body, which would, again, on a science level, is a level of magic and impressiveness that I don't particularly understand. So, God bless you, uh, Douglas Melton, for this, this wonderful idea. Um, God bless you, Brian Shelton, for being the first one to be willing to try this. And man, uh, I'm praying for you. I hope this works really well. I hope this is everything that, um, that everyone hopes it could be, because if this could really produce some freedom for all of the folks suffering from type 1 diabetes in the world, this would be wonderful. Obviously, we're way too early to know. If you're interested in trials and you think that you might be a, um, a candidate for that, there are some links that you can kind of track through. It looks like they're still recruiting from some of these trials. Um, full disclosure, I do not have any money in Vertex. I don't know anybody from Vertex. Um, they don't ask me for things. I don't get money for speaking for them or anything like that. I am just a guy who thought this was really fascinating and is something that uh, you might find interesting as well. So um, for the researchers who came up with this, again, I am just incredibly impressed. Good work.